This is amazing. Now we are going to see about graph rag using sci-fi. This is a great alternative to Microsoft's graph rag. So how this is different from Microsoft's graph rag? So when you compare the cost, it is 10 times cheaper. But in regards to Microsoft graph rag, it costs higher. The performance is comparable to GPT-4 and better efficiency. But Microsoft rag is high resource consumption. Flexibility in regards to Sci-Fi XXX is supports diverse and complex input. The ease of use is immediate usage using R2R, RAG Engine and Neo4j. But in regards to graph RAG using Microsoft, you need to convert the data to Neo4j compatible to visualize. And training is done using DBpedia, Wikidata, synthetic datasets. So how this is done? So in regards to Microsoft's graph RAG, it involves prompt and large language model. So we use a prompt to extract entities and relationships from the provided data. But in regards to Sci-Fi XXX, a large language model is fine-tuned to respond with entities and relationships. It's same like a large language model fine-tuned for function calling. Then after that, this is saved in the database, such as Neo4j. So this XXX is an open source large language model available in Hugging Face and in Olama. So in regards to accuracy, you can see that XXX is much better than GPT-40 in regards to graph rag extraction. Similarly, when you see the price comparison, the XXX is far lower in cost compared to GPT-40. You can also use Olama locally on your computer and run this for free. This is a huge win. That's exactly what we're going to see today. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm really excited to show you about Sci-Fi XXX model. The reason why it's called XXX is because you'll be entering a text, the relationships, and the entity types which you want to extract from the input text. XXX is fine-tuned version of 533.8 billion for creating knowledge graphs from unstructured data. It works by extracting triplets, that is subject, predicate, and object. In this, we'll be seeing how you can run this using Hugging Face, how to run using Olama, then how to simplify the process of running this using R2R, then finally store it in a database and visualize it. As you can see here, you are able to visualize those relationships. But before that, I regularly create videos in regards to artificial intelligence on my YouTube channel. So do subscribe and click the bell icon to stay tuned. Make sure to click the like button so this video can be helpful for many others like you. First, let's get to the basics. What is basic rag and what is graph rag and how they are different? So basic rag is a process by which you convert the data into embeddings and then store that in the vector database. But graph rag, you extract entities and relationships from the data provided and then save that in a database, such as a knowledge graph database. So this process is called indexing. And that's the step number one. Step number two, when the user asks a question in regards to basic rag, it searches the vector database and returns the top end results. And then that is sent to the large language model to generate a response. The quality of the response is going to be lesser compared to a graph rag. So in regards to graph rack, when the user asks a question, it performs a knowledge graph search where it returns the entity and relationships. Then that is sent to the large language model to generate a response. And the output is of higher quality. This process is called querying. And the whole process at the bottom is graph rack. So now we are going to apply graph rack using large language model. So first step, we are going to use Hugging Face library to run this. You need a graphic card for this, and I am using RTX A6000. This is only required if you're running using Transformers. I'm using Mask Compute and you can use Mervin Prisoner's coupon code to get 50% off. Now in your terminal, pip install Transformers and Torch and then click enter. So after that, let's create a file called app.py and let's open it. Inside the file, import JSON from Transformers, import auto model for coastal LM and auto tokenizer. Next, we are going to define a function called triple extract and we are passing the model, tokenizer, text, entities, predicates. So as I mentioned before, we are providing three input, subject, predicate, and object. So the entity, relationships, and text. And the text says Elon Musk is the founder of SpaceX. And here you can see the entities and triplets. The person name is Elon Musk, organization SpaceX, founded by, that is the relationship. So that's what's happening here. We are providing the prompt, then that prompt is assigned to messages, and the messages is converted to tokens using tokenizer and then used model.generate to generate the response. And here you got the input IDs. 
And finally, we are returning the output. That's it. So just getting the input prompt, processing the request using model.generate, and returning the response. Next, we are defining the model, the sci-fi triplex, defining the tokenizer, the entity types to extract the predicates, then the text. And from this text, we are going to extract entities and relationships. And finally, we are calling the triplex extract function and passing all those things. And finally, printing the response. That's it. As we saw before, we are sending entity types, predicates, and text to the large language model and printing out the response. Now I'm going to run this code in your terminal, Python app .py, and then click enter. And now it will automatically download the model. Now you can see it's automatically running the request. And here is the response with entities and triplets. As the input, we provided entity types, predicates, text, and it's clearly getting the graph out from that. And now we are able to process this, save that in a database, and use it for graph rag. Much simpler approach is running using Olama. So next we are going to see how you can run using Olama. Just download Olama from olama.com. So run Olama pull sci-fi triple X, Olama pull Llama 3, and Olama pull MX Bay embed large. This model is for entities and relationship extraction. This model is for using the entities and relationship to generate the response. So that is for rag, and this is for embedding the text. Now click enter. Now we are going to use only this sci-fi triplex. So Olama run sci-fi triplex and then click enter. I'm going to put a bunch of text, same as before, with entity types, predicates, text, and with the same prompt, same as we gave before, I'm going to click enter. Now you can see the response is getting generated with entities and triplets. Now I can store this locally on my computer on a knowledge graph database, such as Neo4j. The process by which you need to convert this and put it in Neo4j, it's all too complicated. It involves multiple steps of setting up Neo4j, copying the data across. It's complicated. But to simplify this process, we have R2R. So next is R2R. Sci-Fi is the company who created R2R. It is used to build, scale, and manage user-facing RAG application. You are able to ingest data, do hybrid search, graph RAG using triplex, app management, observability, extensibility, and much more. So in this, we are going to use graph frag. So in my local computer, pip install r2r and then click enter. This is the main package. And also, I'm going to use Docker, which means you need to download Docker on your computer. You can also run without Docker. I'm going to create a file called local neo4j underscore kg, that is knowledge graph, and open it. Inside the file, I'm just keeping some configuration such as the model name that is Olama Sci-Fi Triplex, the way we need to split the text, recursive characters text splitter, providers Neo4j, and just the basic settings, which you can modify based on your requirement. Now, keeping this as it is, coming back to my terminal, just typing this command. I will provide all the code and the commands in the description below. So you can just copy and paste it. So just type R2R. The config name is a config which we are just taught, then serve, docker, and Docker extension is Neo4j, and then click enter. This will automatically download the required Docker image and start running it. So when you type Docker PS, you should be able to see all the R2R dashboard, R2R main, PG vector, Neo4j, and traffic. So currently you can see traffic is running in port number 80. Sometime in your computer, you might be running some other application in port number 80. In my case, it is Mac, so I might need to disable Apache by just typing sudo apache ctl stop and giving my password. Similarly, sudo nginx stop if you're running nginx. You might need to run this before starting the Docker container or if you see that it fails in port number 80. Now we are all ready. I have a file called data.txt and it says, John is a person that works at Google. Paul is a person that works at Microsoft that collaborates with John. Now we are going to extract entities and the relationship. In your terminal, r2r ingest files and data.txt and click enter. This will automatically start ingesting the data that is extracting the entities and relationships and then storing in the database. You can see data.txt process successfully. Now I can see the knowledge graph. Just type r2r inspect knowledge graph and then click enter. And here is a response. John is employed by Google. Paul is employed by Microsoft, collaborates with John. Number of nodes, number of edges, number of connected components, and everything is simplified using R2R. 
you can also integrate this with your Python application. Now I can even search that is query or knowledge graph database using R2R search query who is John and then click enter. And here is the search results. John is the person that works at Google and other information. You can even pass this information directly to a large language model to perform graph rag. This simplifies the whole process. Finally, to see that in Neo4j, just open this URL and the username is Neo4j and the password is indeed a strong password. This is just from Docker file, which you need to modify for security reasons. I'll put all this information in the description below. So after that, when you click entity, you can see the relationship. I'm going to zoom in and you can see John, Paul, Microsoft, Google is an employee of the relationships collaborates with. So when I ingest a chunk of data and see the overall picture, the quality of the response is going to be higher. I'm really excited about this. I'm going to create more videos similar to this, so stay tuned. I hope you like this video. Do like, share and subscribe and thanks for watching.